Hey guys, this is a quick review of exponents for pre-calc and calc students. So these are things that I notice are kind of quickly forgotten. So this is just a really quick refresher. This was kind of a request. So if you have requests, you can always leave me a comment or you can go to divideandconquermath.com and email me. If I can, I'll make it. I'm trying to make a really positive math community here on YouTube. So every bit of feedback I get from you guys is super helpful. Okay, so let's start with the three main rules. Okay. So this first one is called the product rule. So if you've got x to the n times x to the n, you add the exponents. If you have the parentheses like this, then you multiply them. And then if you have a division like this, then you subtract them. Now, if you forgot these, I highly recommend you pause the video, write these down, put this someplace where you can easily find it. Like if you're using a notebook, write it like on the back page of your notebook so you can easily find it in case you forget. All right. So let's just do a couple of examples. Maybe you want to pause the video here and just kind of dust off the cobwebs to see if you can get through this and then hit play when you're ready. So, all right, this too is where we actually, we have to start here. So we can't just start adding exponents. Order of operations says we have to do the parentheses first, right? Think PEMDAS. So this, I really need to distribute to all parts of this. So it needs to go to the three, the four and the seven. So this is a little bit of a plot twist here. So here's what this looks like. I need to take three squared and then X to the fourth times two and then Y to the seventh times two and then multiply all of that like this. Okay, so now you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. Three squared, so three times three. Sometimes people will do three times two because they're, they're thinking about this, but it's three times three. So this is gonna be nine X to the eighth, Y to the 14th, and now I can add the exponents that are left over. So I've got x to the 8th and x to the 7th. So 8 plus 7 is 15. So this will be 9x to the 15th. And then this will be y to the 14th and y to the 3rd. So add those. This will be y to the 17th. Boom. Done. Okay, so moving on to B here. So once again, maybe you want to pause the video and then hit play when you're ready. This one's a little trickier. Okay. So in trying to apply this exponent to this negative two. So keep in mind the negative two is actually in parentheses. So that, that really matters actually in this problem. So here's the way I want to visualize this. I want to think about this as negative two to the third, and then I'll, I'll multiply these other exponents on top. So this will be three times three. So this will be nine and then six times three. So that'll be 18. Okay. So that's just the top. Then in the bottom, I'm going to have three to the fourth, x to the fourth and then y to the eighth. So I multiplied, there's an invisible one here times the four and then two times the four. So the three didn't need the parentheses because it's just gonna stay positive, but I put parentheses around this because I actually need to think through the details on this. So negative two to the third is negative two times negative two times negative two. So this actually ends up ultimately negative. So that, that's just an important distinction to have. So this will be negative eight x to the ninth y to the 18th over 81, x to the fourth, y to the eighth. From here, I can subtract the exponents. So this will be negative eight. So I'll take the nine minus the four here. So this will be x to the fifth. And then this will be 18 minus eight. So this will be y to the 10th, all of that over 81. Okay, so now let's talk about negative exponents real quick. So I've got the three r rules, like it's all kind of the same thing, honestly, but I think this is the best visual representation. So I always think of negative exponents. It's really more of just a set of directions telling you where to put things. So for instance, if I have X to the negative N, send that X to the denominator or vice versa. If I have one over X to the negative N, bring that X to the top and then just flip the exponent. And then here you can see that x, x over y to the negative n. So basically flip what's inside the parentheses and then you can distribute that exponent. Okay, so once again, pause the video if you wanna write these down. These are like pretty basic facts for a pre-calc or calc class. So write them down if you need them. So here's the first example I have just as your, your crash course review. Once again, consider pausing and then hitting play when you're ready. So this tends to be kind of tricky for people. Um, 
because I, I think a lot of times they see these negative exponents and then they start think of thinking about negative numbers and you have to be super, super careful with this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of keep in mind, I need to distribute this all the way across. So this will be four to the negative third. I will deal with that later. And now I'm gonna multiply all of these exponents by the negative three. So I've got negative three times negative three, so that's positive nine. I've got seven times negative three, so that's negative 21. And then, let's see, we'll have z to the 10 times negative three, so that's negative 30. Okay, so first I set it up like this. And now, in general, when you're working with problems like this, you cannot have negative exponents in your answer. So this, this, and this all have negative exponents. So I want to just rewrite this problem without the negative exponents. So the x to the ninth will stay on top. The rest of this goes to the bottom. And then there's something I haven't done. I haven't evaluated four to the third. And I didn't do that because I, I wanted a chance to like deal with the negative exponent. So notice how I kind of broke this out into two steps. So my final answer will be x to the n over 64 x to the 21st, z to the 30th. All done. Okay, so I've got one more tricky example here for you. So again, if you wanna pause the video, I highly recommend that. That's really the best way if you're watching this for review. Get your hands dirty with the exponents and, and do the review. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the solution. So there's lots of different ways you can do this one. I'm gonna show you what I think is the most efficient and least likely to make an error. If you went a different way and you got the same answer, great. If you didn't get the same answer, then that means you made a mistake somewhere. So you'll want to just backtrack and kind of scrutinize your work. So my personal preference, I always like to simplify inside the parentheses before I do anything else. So I know there's a negative exponent out here, but I'm going to ignore it for a second because there's just a lot of stuff I can do in here. So notice I have a negative exponent here, here, and here. So what that means is all of those letters need to flip their position. Now, the three does not have a negative exponent, so it stays put. Okay, so this is gonna be three. I'm gonna bring that y to the 10th up to the top. I've still got the x to the third here, x to the fourth, y to the seventh. Okay, I haven't done anything with the outside exponent yet. Now notice by rewriting all of this, I can actually really see this quite clearly. So with these x's, I'm going to add these two exponents. And then with the y's, I'm going to subtract those. So now we can finish simplifying the inside. So this will be three y to the third, because I took the 10 minus the seven. And then in the bottom, this will be x to the seventh. And then all of that's to the negative second. So now that I've simplified this as far as I possibly can, now I wanna pivot to this. So I'm gonna flip the whole thing. So this will be x to the seventh over 3y to the third. And so look what happens to the outside exponent. Now it's positive, and now I can go ahead and square everything. So I'm gonna take x to the seven times two, so this will be x to the 14th. Now remember, I have to take three and I have to square it. So this will be nine and then y to the six. There you go. And I have one more thing I just wanna refresh for you guys. What do you do with rational exponents? So this is now combining everything we just talked about, but now also adding in the extra element of kind of what do you do with roots. So this will come up from time to time. So you've got the square root of x is x to the one half. And then really if whatever number you have out here, it's just gonna be always in the denominator of this. And then if you had something like x to the m underneath the radical, then this would be how you write this. So again, write this down if this is something that you have forgotten which is common for people to forget, so it's, it's not a big deal. But write it down, and I just have two more examples here. So this one is kind of a favorite, actually, because if you look at this, if you don't know what the trick is, this one's really, really tricky. I mean, I guess you could say that for all math, right? So the only way you can do this, since they don't have the same index, that's what, by the way, this, this number out here, this is an index of three, a square root has an index of two, that's the official name. Since they don't have the same index, you can't just multiply these outright. The only way you can do this, do this is if you rewrite this as rational exponents. Which if I rewrite this as rational exponents, this is x to the two thirds times x to the one half. 
And now you can see by looking at this that you want to add them, but you cannot right now because you got to make them into common denominators. And they have the common denominator of 6. So this will be x to the 4 6 times x to the 3 6. So ultimately this will equal x to the 7 6. And if I wanted to rewrite that in its radical form, just as a bonus review, this would be the 6 root of x to the 7th, which I could totally simplify as x times the 6 root of x. Okay, and last thing. Again, maybe you want to pause the video here, hit play when you're ready. So once again, I just want to rewrite all of these exponents with the denominator of 12, because that's the LCD of all the fractions I'm looking at. So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the 6 over 12, x to the 4 over 12, and then x to the 3 over 12. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two exponents first. So I'm just going to go piece by piece. So this will be x to the 10 over 12 over x to the 3 over 12. And then I can subtract those. So this will ultimately equal x to the 7 over 12. And so that's my final answer. So that covers it for this really quick crash course into exponents. So totally normal to forget. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll talk to you guys next time.